The removal of the chicane at Barcelona is not going to go unnoticed. Preparing for an F1 race is very much a team effort, so we've got a lot of people here in a variety of roles. Uh, the closer you are to the race events, to the race team, the shorter term you'll be looking. And it's our job at the factory looking further ahead to make sure we're prepared in advance so that when we come to meetings the week before or the week of the race, we have all the results ready to go for the race team. From an engineering point of view, what do we indicate with track characteristics? So every track is different from another one, uh, principally because of the layout. What's the balance between corners and straights? How long are the straights? The surface, so the type of tarmac and how it interacts with the tires. The weather is another thing that is also quite different from all the venues we are going to. There are also tracks like Austria, for example, where you have cambered corners. Uh, some are on camber, which means that the track leans to the inside of the corner, or other ones where you got a negative camber, so the, the inside of the corner tends to be higher than the outside. Vehicle dynamics really encompasses every aspect of the race car and how it comes together. So it's our job to understand how the aerodynamics interact with the mechanical setup and the tyres and how they're behaving, and in turn, how that affects the driver and their interaction with the car. When we talk about the feel in the car, it usually just means how connected are we to it? How much confidence does the car give us? And that's usually relatable to how the setup is of the car, how does the tarmac feel, or how does the track in general comply with, with what we expected? The track characteristics are impacting the way we're setting up the car. The layout dictates what your efficiency uh, has to be, hence the choice of your rear wing. So Monza is looking for a high efficiency car and rear wing. Monaco is the opposite. You like dirty downfield, you like to be inefficient, but with as much load as you can. When we get to a race weekend, track time is very limited. We only have a few practice sessions at the weekend, so we need to be as prepared as possible. And the simulator is our only tool that has the driver in the loop. So as well as the data and the lap time measurements, we also get the fundamental driver feedback. So it's a really vital tool. When asked how important the simulator is, usually the answer will be very important. Uh, these days, the simulators have become very valuable to us. Track time is incredibly limited, and while sim time is less so, we still need to get drivers in, we need to have them do a number of laps for every test item, so there is still a time limit in what we can achieve in the simulator. So we use computer simulations to scan a much wider range of options, and we pick the most interesting ones to test in the simulator, and then a subset of those will be tested at the track. Any circuit changes, whether it's a change in the layout or a resurfacing of the track, that introduces uncertainty into our process. As engineers, we love data, so we're happiest when we have a big history at that track and we know that the decisions we're making are correct. Barcelona has always been in the top list of preferred tracks for most teams. It used to be the track where most teams went for pre-season testing, which meant it kind of became the standard place to be in and try out new things. The removal of the chicane at Barcelona is not going to go unnoticed. It was the slowest corner of the track with high curbs and your setup had to be compromised for it. Now that that is gone, flavor of the track will change slightly. Having changed the Barcelona layout, usually that will have as an impact the speed of the track. It will, it'll increase massively. We'll obviously lose that chicane, which is probably the slowest part of the track. So that will mean quite a lot more stress on the left side of the, of the car. You're going to have two high-speed corners instead of a medium and a chicane. The corner was coming at the end of a long sequence in sector three, hence your tyres were well past their best and very hot, so stability was always an issue going into the chicane. You had to ride this kerb, so you needed your car to be a bit more compliant and soft on landing. When there are changes to the circuit, we have to be more predictive and make assumptions about how those are going to affect the race weekend. We also have to be a bit more adaptive to what we find when we get to the track. Barcelona has always been at the top end of our downfalls. Will it change with the removal of the chicane? Not substantially, we're going to still be there and thereabouts. When we have a layout change, like the removal of the chicane in Barcelona, it's really important for us that we get the most up-to-date information about the changes to the circuit. 
We can then incorporate them into the simulator, give the driver the opportunity to familiarise with the new track and get their feedback on how it might change the setup of the car.